super low quality video comes to you from the fact that I'm feeling very lazy today. It's my technical first day of summer. Uh, we're done with students for the year, but we still have Monday and Tuesday teacher days. Uh, but I'm just having a lazy day, but I realized that I needed to film my May reading wrap up. And I am a big fan of having the May reading wrap up actually go up like at the end of the month. So I decided to do it. You can see my squirrel candle here that just kind of looks like a glowing dinosaur, but I promise it's a squirrel. And let's do what I read in May, I guess. So first, I'll talk about these both kind of at the same time. I read two more of the Redwall books. I read The Bellmaker and Martin the Warrior. I don't, which order do these go in? Martin the Warrior and then The Bellmaker. And I, I'm loving this reread. This series is really just such a glorious fantasy series with a lot of great messages and adventure and suspense. And since I haven't read them since I was like nine or ten years old, I don't remember a lot of the actual plot lines, so I can still be surprised, even though I am familiar with the story, so it's kind of nice. They're really quick reads, even though they're like 400 pages, because I have read them before and because they are written for children, and I've just been really loving them. Um, I really forgot how much I loved Martin the Warrior a lot and The Millmaker was also really great, and I'm currently reading the next one after that, which is The Outcast of Redwall, and we'll see. I'm hoping to maybe make it through this reread by the end of this year, but I don't know if that'll happen or not. The next book, these are not in order that I read them either, by the way. Uh, the next book that I read was Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. This was also a reread from my childhood. I reread this because I have joined a book club in my town with one of my friends from work invited me to go to her book club that she's been a part of and this was the book that they read for May and I had already read it but I was like I will reread it for your book club because I really want to be a part of the book club and it was great in a reread. I'm pretty sure that when I read this originally when I was like 12 or 13 I only understood the surface level of the story, so it was great to see some of the deeper meaning in it, and really the science is great. I love this book. Um, it almost made me want to reread the whole like double series, but I don't think I'm going to because there's just too many new books to read that I haven't read before, but this one was great to revisit and see again and I love exploring the dynamic especially between Ender and Violet and Peter as siblings and it was great to discuss at book club and I'm excited to be a part of a book club and they're reading I Am Malala next month which will also be a reread for me so we'll see if I reread that or just kind of go off what I remember. Um, next we have I Will Give You the Sun by J.D. Nelson. First of all like how gorgeous is this cover and I even look at under the dust jacket like you have this brilliant orange you can't see it can you kind of the embossing sun streaks and this brilliant orange on the side it's so pretty um this was I got Barnes and Noble member coupons and then texted my friend Teddy in the middle of Barnes and Noble and was like quick best YA novel you've read recently and the first two that she said they didn't have at my Barnes and Noble but then she said this one and they did have it and I got it and it was amazing. I think Jandy Nelson's strength is really writing these physical manifestations of feelings in this way where like she'll write something and at first you think it's actually physically happening in the space but then you realize that that's actually just a description of how the character is feeling and it, oh, it's so brilliant and this is a great exploration of siblings and family and perspective. It was brilliant and I loved it and uh, yeah read this one. Next 
Say Anything by Sarah Dessen. This also has a gorgeous cover. I have been a Sarah Dessen fan for a very long time. I think I've read all of hers. I might have missed one of the more recent ones. But a lot of them are very similar, and I thought this one was slightly different. It's a little bit darker than a normal Sarah Dessen book. I thought it was very real and a little bit less fairy tale like some of hers are. Not that that's a bad thing, but it was just a little bit less like that. Real depiction of uh, disease and addiction and kids getting into trouble and the portrayal of society and it made me think a lot about the kids that I teach at the alternative school that I teach at and how they are perceived by society and kind of like brushed away and ignored sometimes and it was very relevant to me and I enjoyed it quite a bit. Both that and I'll give you this one were pretty quick reads which was good. And the last one that I read, oh okay, is called Our Kids The American Dream in Crisis by Robert D. Putnam. It is nonfiction. This was recommended at the alternative school conference that I went to in the beginning of April and I decided to purchase it and give it a read because I really liked the speaker who talked about this book and he made it seem like a really good book and it just wasn't what I wanted it to be. I thought it was going to be a lot more about solutions and a lot less about the problem and a lot of the conclusions made in the book were that the problem basically starts before the kids even get to school and so we have to work there to solve it and that's not that's not where I work. I work in the high school and I was disappointed that the school chapter was filled with so little solution and was mostly just like look at these disparities between rich and poor schools and I was like I wanted to know what we could do in schools to help stop this um, class gap and that wasn't what was in this book so I ended up not really enjoying this that much which was disappointing but you know I read it. That's about all I have to say. Um, it's now summer, so I will probably be reading a lot more, although I'm going to the Women's World Cup next week. Oh my god, next week. Uh, and so I won't be reading that much there, but May Reads. I liked 5 out of 6 that I read, but three of them were rereads, so that's how my reading this year is going. I like almost everything, and I'm doing a lot of rereads. And yeah, this is just gonna go up like this because I, like I said, I'm feeling lazy, and I have a soccer game to watch in like half an hour, so can't be bothered to edit. <laughs>